Well, I do a lot of DIY electronic projects here on my channel. And maybe that's something you do as well, of building your own devices, or maybe it's something that you hope to get into down the road. But there's one problem with these DIY projects, and that is how do we get these things into Home Assistant so that we can use them in our automations? Unfortunately, you're not going to find a built-in integration out there. So there's one thing that almost all of my DIY projects have in common. Is it the fact they all use ESP chips? No, some of them are using Raspberry Pi. Is it the fact that they're all using Arduino code? Nope, some are using Python. The one thing that they all have in common is they utilize MQTT. And MQTT is what allows all these various devices to communicate and integrate into Home Assistant. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So hang around. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. A few of you have reached out to me and asked me to talk a little bit more about MQTT. You kind of know what it is, but it's kind of a hard concept to get your head wrapped around. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to spend a little bit of time with the, kind of the highlights of what MQTT is and a couple of different ways that you might set it up. But I'm going to spend most of the time giving you a real world example, taking one of my projects and showing you how I use MQTT to bring that into Home Assistant and how I use Home Assistant to control that device. Now, again, feel free to use the chapter links down here along the bottom of the screen or down in the video description if you want to jump ahead. And as always, everything I talk about or show, there'll be links to down in the video description. But let's get started. Now, MQTT has been around since 1999 when it was developed by the oil pipeline industry as a way to remotely monitor the pipeline. They needed something that was extremely lightweight, used very little bandwidth, and was good for battery-operated devices. Well, this makes it ideal for our IoT or our smart home projects. Now, originally, MQTT stood for Messaging Queuing Telemetry Transport, but officially since 2013, MQTT stands for nothing. MQTT is just its own standalone. And another nice thing about MQTT is it's really supported pretty much by any modern language out there today. You can find a library or an add-on or a way to use MQTT in just about any language. So how exactly does MQTT work? Well, at the heart of MQTT is the MQTT broker. And that's generally referred to as being like a post office. It's what's going to handle the routing of all of our MQTT messages. And I'll talk a little bit more about the MQTT broker in just a second. But on one side, we have what are called publishers. These are our entities or things that are going to publish information. So for an example here, I've just used some magazines, Hackspace, Make, and Magpie as being publishers. Now let's say, for example, that each of these publish a monthly magazine and a weekly newsletter. When they're ready to, to put out content, what they're going to do is they're going to put what's called an address or a topic onto that content or that message. So instead of addressing something to a particular person, they're going to apply what's called a topic. So for example, uh, Hackspace might have a topic of Hackspace slash mag uh, for their magazine, Hackspace slash news for their newsletter. And you can see that the other ones would have uh, similar type topics. So they're going to address their message with a topic and then they're going to send their payload where the payload really is the content or the article or whatever you want to call it of the actual message itself. They're going to send that off to the MQTT broker. Now on the other end of this, we have our subscribers. They're the ones who are going to be receiving this information. So I've got three examples down here of what we're going to call subscribers. Now what they do is they subscribe to a particular topic of the information that they want. So if, for example, uh, you see Dorfmeister is subscribed to Hackspace Magazine and Magpie News, and each subscriber is subscribing to something different. So what happens is when one of those payloads arrives at the MQTT broker, it's going to automatically send out that message or that content to the entities or people in this case that have subscribed to that message. So that kind of makes sense. So if Let's say that uh, hackspace.mag sends out a payload or a message. It's going to be received by Dorfmeister over here and by 1875 Lady in Waiting, but not by Resin Chem Tech because they're not subscribed to that particular topic. So all that's pretty straightforward. But I think where things get a little bit confusing is the fact that publishers can also be subscribers and subscribers can also be publishers. So sticking with this same example, 
let's say that each of these previous publishers are also going to be subscribers and they have let's say a comment section and either a submission or a photo or a project session so now they have these topics for those that they're going to subscribe to and let's say that Dorfmeister here wants to send a comment off to Magpie all he's got to do is put an address on there in this case Magpie slash comments send that off to the MQTT broker and the MQTT broker will pass that message on to the Magpie comments area but what are exactly these MQTT payloads well that is the message of the content that's being sent by the publisher and you can send that in a lot of different formats uh, the most common is JSON but you can send a single value or you can send a string of values through something like JSON or XML now these messages can be quite big but there may be some limits based on the uh, the broker the configuration remember this was originally developed to send small amounts of information uh, using very little bandwidth it's going to be totally up to the receiver or the subscriber to take that message be able to decode it and do something with it so remember that no matter what the format is the actual message is always sent as a string so if a numeric value is coming through for example the brightness of 255 here it's going to be up to the subscriber to take that message break it apart and take something like that 255 and convert it from a string to a numeric value so let's take a look at an example of how we might do this in home assistant first let's take a look at publishing an mqtt message this is where we want home assistant to send something out to our devices or our entities it's really simple i'll show both the yaml and the automation ui but to publish a message we simply call the mqtt.publish service we give it a topic or that address and send out the payload so any of our devices out there that are subscribed to the topic mylight slash state will receive a payload message of on then it's up to that device to decide what to do with that message but what if we want a home assistant to subscribe to or receive messages from these external devices or entities well that is pretty simple as well in this case we're actually going to use an automation trigger when we use an automation trigger home assistant is going to sit there and wait until it receives a message from the mqtt broker that has a topic of my lamp slash state and in this case also has a payload of on when that happens the automation will now take the action of turning a light on called my lamp so it's really very simple uh, we can both publish and subscribe to messages through home assistant to help interact with these devices that don't have native integrations so i did mention that i would briefly talk about the mqtt broker because an mqtt broker is required uh, to use mqtt now there are lots of different options out there for an mqtt broker some uh, are open source and free others are actually paid versions it doesn't take a lot of horsepower to be an mqtt broker you can easily run this on a raspberry pi uh, there have been attempts to run this on something like an esp32 and while the esp chips are fine to be publishers or subscribers if you have a lot of MQTT messaging going on, the ESP chip's probably going to struggle with that. So I would recommend at least something like a Raspberry Pi or higher to run that. There is also a Home Assistant add-on that within just a couple of clicks, you can make your Home Assistant instance an MQTT broker as well. But there are at least a few advantages and disadvantages of doing that I want us to talk about briefly. And so down here, I'm going to show what I consider the pros and cons of the Home Assistant add-on versus the standalone broker. Now, I'm using the Home Assistant add-on, and so this comes with a little bit of experience. What I list in green, I see as advantages. Yellow could go either way. What I see in red are the disadvantages, and it's probably why if I had to do over again today, I would probably go with a standalone MQTT broker instead of using the Home Assistant add-on. But the Home Assistant add-on works just fine. So there are just a few other terms you ought to be at least familiar with when starting out with MQTT. Probably the most important one is the retain flag. When you publish a message, you can set it to be retained or not. And improper use of this will often lead to things like ghosting, where lights might seem to turn themselves off or on at random, or other devices seem to be acting on their own. Usually that's a result of using this retain flag improperly. I'll talk about that just a little bit more when we look at uh, my DIY device. But there are other things like quality of service, last will and testament, keep alive. Uh, there's plenty of online information about that. Uh, but we know enough right now 
to flip over and let's take a look at how I actually use this with one of my devices in Home Assistant. So for this example, I'm going to use one of my two matrix clocks. I covered the build of this matrix clock in another video uh, and a blog article that has full step-by-step -step build details. But for the purposes of just talking about how MQTT is used, I do want to cover a few of the features here first. Now this uh, runs off of an ESP8266 and has 400 WS2812B pixel strips. Uh, in addition to being uh, clock and temperature, which can be either internal or external temperature, it also has a countdown timer on it. It has a scoreboard mode, in which case you can and use it for a scoreboard of some sort. And it also has a text display mode with a few different uh, text effects available. Let me just also state that I've had to turn the brightness way down here. This is only running at about 4% brightness so that it doesn't overwhelm the camera. It's just really, really hard to film LEDs, and it actually looks a little bit blurry uh, in the, on the camera here. But nearly every part of this clock is customizable. All the different colors, for example, if you wanted your temperature to be red and your time to be orange, uh, all that is available and can be controlled. Now, I did mention this runs on an ESP8266, and that is running custom Arduino code, which means there is no native integration into Home Assistant. So to be able to set and control all of these things with the clock, that's where we have to use MQTT. Here's a list of all the MQTT topics involved with this clock. Now this first list are the commands that are published to the clock. That means they're published by Home Assistant and the clock subscribes to these topics. So you can see all the different control options there. Now this next list are states that are published from the clock and subscribed to by Home Assistant. So you can see that there are a lot of MQTT topics involved here. So this is my Home Assistant dashboard that actually controls this matrix clock. Everything you see here is done with MQTT. So for example, I can switch over to my countdown mode and you notice the clock changes. Again, I have the ability to start, uh, stop, and reset that. Again, all through automations and through the use of MQTT. With my scoreboard, I can even do something like change the team names that are listed at the top, something like Dallas at Miami, laying on there. And again, I have the ability to, to specify whatever text and select different text effects here, all through MQTT. In addition, I have brightness control, and like I mentioned before, let's say I want my clock to, to be uh, red instead of blue. I can easily change those colors there, switch my Fahrenheit to display, uh, again, change the temperature color, on and on and on. I can even sync the time from the Home Assistant server to this clock. Now, the clock runs uh, locally with its own RTC or real-time clock module. But if they do get out of sync or something like daylight savings time, I can either manually load any time that I want, or I can actually just sync this right up to Home Assistant, which I actually have it do uh, like 11.45 p.m. every night, just because the clock will tend to drift a second or two just because of how Arduino works. So it does sync uh, once a night with the Home Assistant time. And again, all that is done through MQTT. So you might be asking, it makes sense that Home Assistant publishes and the clock subscribes to these commands, but why does the clock publish its states? Well, if you notice here, there are local push buttons on the clock. So the clock can be changed outside of Home Assistant. And by publishing its states, Home Assistant can subscribe to those. And if a change occurs outside of Home Assistant on the clock, Home Assistant can take action and update its own entities. If this wasn't the case, it would be possible to change something on the clock and then Home Assistant would actually be out of sync or show something different than the true actual state of the clock. So that's why the clock publishes its states as well as subscribing to Home Assistant topics. Now is a good time to take a couple of minutes to talk about that MQTT retain flag that I mentioned. Often people will either have issues or experience unexpected behavior from their devices, and a lot of times that's due to the improper use of that retain flag. When a message is published to the MQTT broker with the retain flag set to true, the broker is going to hang on to that last message and it's going to keep that same value until a new value was published. That means any device that connects or reconnects to the broker will receive that retained value immediately. 
Now here's an example using uh, something called MQTT Explorer. It's a really handy utility to have. I'll leave a link to it down in the video description, but it's showing where I have a topic of stat matrix mode and it's set with retain flag of true. Now, if you publish the message with retain flag false, as soon as the MQTT broker delivers that message out to the subscribers, that message is then discarded and no longer kept. Well, how am I using these flags improperly cause an issue? Well, first let's take a look at a situation where we're using an MQTT retain flag of false. Do you ever restart Home Assistant and see things that look like this? A bunch of entities that are either unknown or throwing up some kind of error? Well, in this situation, it's because these are MQTT entities and the publisher published its last values with the retain flag set to false. So when Home Assistant connects to the MQTT broker and tries to get all the values that it's subscribed to, those values don't exist because they were published with the retain flag of false. Now, as soon as the devices do publish a value, then Home Assistant will pick those up and those entities will be reflected correctly. But this is a situation where if those values were published with the retain flag set to true, the values would have been available immediately when Home Assistant restarted and connected to the broker. So why not just publish all of your MQTT topics with the retain flag set to true? Well, let's take a look at an example where using a retain flag of true can also cause an issue. So for this example, let's just say we've got an MQTT device. I'm just going to use a light bulb here, but it would be some device that has custom firmware that uses MQTT. And over here on the left would be our Home Assistant. So let's say we click the button to turn our desk lamp on. Home Assistant is going to publish an MQTT message with the state with a payload of on, but the retain flag is going to be set to true. Well, the light bulb subscribes to that topic, and when it receives that message, sure enough, it turns itself on. Everything up to this point is fine. Now note that our MQTT broker kept that last message of on because the retain flag was true. But now let's say some kind of external event turns that light bulb off. Now I'm showing a light switch here, but it could be a mobile app. It could be anything outside of, of MQTT and Home Assistant turns that light off. Well, right off the get go, we've got a problem. Unless this MQTT device also updates that last message or publishes some other state, first of all, notice that Home Assistant still shows that the light is turned on even though it's off. The bigger issue here is let's say that for whatever reason, uh, the MQTT device loses its connection to the broker. Now that might be because Wi-Fi glitched or maybe even the device goes into a standby low power mode and disconnects from the broker. Well, if you remember that when a device reconnects to the broker, it's going to receive all the values that it subscribes to that are current in the broker. So when that reconnects to the MQTT broker, again, it's going to receive that last message of on and the light bulb is going to turn itself back on again. This is what's known as ghosting. So if you've got MQTT devices that seem to be acting on their own, being done by ghosts, it's most likely due to improper use of that MQTT re retain flag set to true and the device is disconnecting and reconnecting to the broker. So how do you address these two issues and make sure that you're setting the retain flag properly? Well, there are a lot of different ways to do it, but here's the rule of thumb that I use. In my MQTT devices, I use a starting topic of stat or state for any values that are just reporting the state. So I set those with a retain flag of true. So anything that connects to the broker will be able to get the current state of that MQTT device. I use a starting topic of CMND or command for anything that's actually going to change a state. And with that, I always use a retain flag of false. So let's take a look at how this might work using our previous example of an MQTT device that's integrated into Home Assistant. Just like before, when we click the button, turn the device on, Home Assistant is going to publish a command topic to turn the light bulb on, the light bulb turns on. The difference here is we're going to publish that with a retain flag of false. One other difference here is the fact the MQTT device is always going to publish its current state or anytime it changes onto a topic of stat or state. And Home Assistant is going to subscribe to that. So at this point in our MQTT broker, our last command that was published has no value. It, it doesn't exist. However, we do have the current state of the light, which is published 
with the retain flag set to true. So now if some outside entity changes that light bulb, notice the light bulb publishes its state, which is retained, and since Home Assistant subscribes to that, the switch turns off and the two are in sync. But more importantly, if the MQT device loses its connection to the broker, when that is reestablished, it's going to go out and look for everything it's subscribed to, which is the command. In this case, it doesn't exist, so therefore the light bulb doesn't turn itself on. In addition, since we have all of the current states of the light bulb as retained, when we restart Home Assistant, it's going to immediately have access to those and it will reboot with the current and accurate state of that MQTT entity. Therefore, you won't see that unknown or see an error in your Lovelace card. Yeah, I know that retain flag can be really confusing, but if you are experiencing unexpected behavior out of your MQTT devices, the retain flag is one of the first things to take a look at and using something like that MQTT Explorer utility can be a big help. With that behind us, let's move on to taking a look at the code, both on the MQTT device and in Home Assistant that makes all this magic work. Let's start by taking a quick look at the Arduino side or the ESP8266 that runs on the clock. Now again, I mentioned that that's Arduino code, but just to show you how similar it is and the fact that MQTT can run in different languages, over here on the right, I've also included code snippets from my Pi Parking Assistant, which actually runs in Python. So you can see how similar they are. Over here, in both cases, we're going to import an MQTT library. And then in both cases, we're going to connect to that MQTT broker. That usually involves specifying the IP address and a username and password. Then we're going to subscribe to all the topics we want to listen to. So in the case of the matrix clock, we want to subscribe to anything that Home Assistant might be publishing so that we can take action on it. On the flip side, to publish a message, we simply issue a publish statement with the topic and then the payload. And in both cases, we have to have basically a process to what do we want to do when we sit and listen uh, for anything that we subscribe to, how do we want to handle that when uh, we receive a payload from one of the topics we're subscribed to. So in both cases, we normally have some sort of callback method. Now again, those that's not complete code, those are just snippets, but that's kind of how it works over on the ESP8266 side. Now let's take a look at the Home Assistant side. Okay, so here we are over on the Home Assistant side. Now, if you followed any of my other videos, you know that I'm a YAML guy. Uh, if you don't use YAML, I apologize. Just try to follow the logic here because pretty much everything I'm doing here can also be done now through the Home Assistant UI Automation Editor. I'm also using packages, which is nice because I have everything related to my clock all here in one file and I don't have to jump around to a bunch of different YAML files. So I do have some sensors defined here that are templated sensors. That's really more for display purposes. What we're really interested in down here are the MQTT entities. So the thing that I've done is I've defined a number of sensors and it's very easy to define an MQTT sensor. All I have to do is basically list the MQTT topic I want to listen to. So for example, when I look at the brightness, I'm going to listen to my stat matrix brightness. Anytime the clock publishes a value with this topic, Home Assistant is going to pick up that value and set the sensor of matrix brightness to the value that was published from the clock. So if the clock goes from a brightness of 20 to 30, the sensor will automatically be updated in Home Assistant from 20 to 30. And you can see I have a whole bunch of these defined for all those different state topics or stat topics that the clock might publish. That way I can define sensors that I can use in my dashboards and elsewhere in my automations. I've also defined a number of MQTT switches here. Now the switches are tied to those buttons you saw on the dashboard. For example, the ones that change it from a clock to scoreboard to countdown mode. And they're similar to the other uh, MQTT sensors, but there is a difference here. So for example, let's just look at the countdown. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm listening the clock to publish a payload on stat matrix mode. If that payload happens to be countdown, we're going to turn that switch on. So anytime, like when I push the button on the clock, you saw that Home Assistant updated automatically because it received a payload on this particular topic. Now the difference here is I can also click that button in the dashboard. 
when I do that, it's actually going to issue an MQTT message back to the clock, in this case on command matrix mode. In the case of clock, it's going to issue a payload of zero, payload of one for this, scoreboard is two, text mode is three. So now the clock can take action on that and change its mode. So switches actually work to both subscribe to and publish MQTT messages. There are also a number of helper entities here, and those are really just to create sliders or things like uh, text entries for things like the text display or the scoreboard team names. And so those are just really standard helpers, but you'll see how these are used down in the automations in just a second. Finally, let's take a look at the automations. Now there's a slew of them here. Uh, we'll just take a look at one to give you an idea of both uh, subscribing and publishing to MQTT. This first one has to do with the overall brightness of the matrix. So in the first one, uh, we're actually going to set the, uh, the brightness of the matrix. In that case, our trigger is going to be an input number. So it's going to be a slider on our, on our dashboard. When we move that slider and we change the value of it, we're now going to publish an MQTT message. Again, the topic of that is going to be our command matrix brightness. And the payload is actually going to just be the value of that slider. So when we go from 10 to 20, it's going to publish a payload of 20. Now on the clock side, again, it's going to use that callback handler and it's going to change the brightness of the matrix to 20. On the flip side of that, if the clock publishes a value for brightness, we're going to sit here and we're going to listen uh, on for the MQTT topic of state matrix brightness. If a value is published on that topic, then we're actually going to take our input number and we're going to set it to the payload value of that MQTT message. So that's just one example of how I use MQTT to bring some of my custom DIY projects into Home Assistant and integrate them. Now again, you're not limited to just Arduino, C++, or even Python. Um, almost every language has some support for MQTT. Now note that MQTT is not the only way to integrate your DIY projects into Home Assistant. There are Home Assistant APIs available, but those require a pretty good understanding of the inner workings of Home Assistant to be able to use those. And if you are brand new to MQTT, hopefully I didn't make things more confusing, especially there at the end, but MQTT is really pretty easy to understand and use once you get the hang of it. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Otherwise, if you found anything in this video that you liked or found useful, uh, hit that thumbs up button. That lets me and YouTube both know that you'd like to see more videos like this. If you'd like to see more of my content, Click that subscribe button and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new videos. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.